So as some of you may or may not know, I decided to upgrade from my R6 that I have owned since release to the brand new R6 Mark II, pre-ordering it on announcement. My reasons for upgrading were mainly based around the promised video improvements from the original R6, but now that I've had the camera for around about 60 days and I've been using it in both video and photo, I wanted to post a follow-up video giving my thoughts on the camera and whether I regret it upgrading or not. Now when the R6 Mark II was announced, the photo upgrades were pretty much just that bump in resolution from 20 megapixels to 24 megapixels, as well as a slight improvement in autofocus. So I wasn't really expecting much since I was already pretty happy with the original R6 in terms of photo image quality, and I already have the R5 for higher resolution photos. However, probably my biggest surprise this past few weeks when using the Mark II has probably been on the improvements on the photo side in terms of image quality. Back when I would use the R6 and the R5 together on a shoot, when I would look between the photos and compare the resolution, I would always notice that drop to 20 megapixels from the 45 megapixels of the R5. This would be mostly apparent when cropping, but just in general, I always thought that the R5 just had much more quality in the photo department. With the Mark II, I still noticed that drop in resolution, of course, but it is much less noticeable compared to the original R6 and I think it punches way above its 24 megapixel weight class. I think the files are actually much closer in quality to the original EOS R in terms of resolution. They are very sharp and very crisp and I've been super impressed with these photos from the Mark II, especially alongside the R5, which is probably the best photo camera I've ever used. Another big improvement over the original R6 on the Mark II is in the colour department. I just find the Mark II's colours much more natural and true to life compared to the original R6, which always tended to lean a little yellow and warm for me. In general, I don't know what wizardry Canon used when manufacturing this 24 megapixel sensor, whether it's the rumoured improvements to the anti-aliasing filter, but they really have squeezed a lot of quality out of this sensor. Dynamic range is excellent on the Mark II. I've been pushing the camera to its limits in some really challenging, contrasty situations, and the camera handles it absolutely fine. There's always a ton of highlight and shadow information to recover, and the files are just amazing to work with and always clean, no matter how hard you push them. The autofocus is incredible, of course. I already thought the original R6 was pretty much perfect, but they have managed to improve it a little bit. And in situations like street photography, it is just so easy to grab a shot quick. It just confidently grabs onto the subject and locks on easily. So moving on to video image quality, an area which I was already pretty happy with the original R6. It had sharp video, great colors and codec, and had no crop in 4K50. The obvious issues were of course the overheating in all modes, as well as that annoying 30 minute record limit and it was just generally pretty clunky switching between photo and video modes. The R6 Mark II is much more well thought out as a hybrid offering, while still carrying over all the great things we liked about the video side of the original R6, with just a few small but welcome improvements. I have noticed, for example, that the 4K50 on the Mark II is a little bit sharper than the original R6. And at this point, to be honest, after trying a few cameras, in my opinion, the R6 Mark II has the best 4K 50p of any camera on the market in this price range. It still has no crop, and now the overheating in 4K 50 is massively improved. Dynamic range is good, and although I haven't noticed a huge improvement over the original, I still feel that the R6 Mark II has more than enough dynamic range for pretty much any situation you're going to throw at it. Sure, it may lag slightly behind the competition in terms of dynamic range, and probably even is not quite as good as my R5, for example. But I also own the C70, which has fantastic dynamic range, and to me, the Mark II only lags behind slightly. I would personally say that the only noticeable thing in terms of dynamic range is the same thing with all of Canon's mirrorless cameras that are locked into C-Log3, is that the highlight roll off is just not as pleasing as something like the C70 with C-Log2. Just like in photo mode, autofocus in video is amazing. It tracks subjects effortlessly and naturally. I would say, to be honest, just moving over to the Mark II, that I find the new additional AF options to be a little bit overwhelming and it's probably overkill for me anyway, and probably for most people. But it's great to have the options, it's just an extra learning curve to get over. Without a doubt, the biggest benefit in terms of video on the Mark II 
is the removal of that annoying 30 minute record limit and also the absence of overheating in 25p. This is a big improvement over the original and sure it does still overheat in 4k 50p but the recording times you get on 50p is dramatically improved over the original. I can get up to an hour and a half in the right recording conditions and to be honest for me personally it is a worthwhile sacrifice to have no crop in 4k 50p. I think that the overheating in 4K50 is easily worked around if you're aware of it. I appreciate that Canon made the effort to introduce the temperature gauge too, so this means that you can manage that overheating a lot easier than you could on the R6, where it would just happen quite suddenly and there was pretty much nothing you could do about it. They have improved on ergonomics and usability over the already great Mark 1 R6, and to be honest, after using this camera side by side with the Sony a7 IV under Lumix S5 Mark II, I would choose this camera every time for its great build, image quality and ergonomics. So let's cover a few things that I don't like about the Canon R6 Mark II. So number one is that there is no full size HDMI on the Canon R6 Mark II. I really feel like there is no excuse for this at this point. The Mark II is a great video camera and I think Canon missed a trick on updating this from the original R6. Other cameras in the price range have a full size HDMI including the Sony A7IV and the Lumix S5. I really wanted to see Canon change this. The micro HDMI is just flimsy and I don't like it, it's unreliable. Another thing HDMI related is that if you plug an external monitor into the R6 Mark II, the camera screen shuts off. So you lose complete control over the camera screen, including things like touch, tap to focus, which I find really annoying. This was the case on the original R6, and I hoped that it would be improved in this camera again, since there are so many video improvements, and since this is not an issue on the R5, but unfortunately it is on the R6 Mark II. This is a big one and an obvious one, and that's that there is no C-Log2 in this camera. Canon insists on only giving C-Log2 to its cinema range, which is annoying and disappointing, but something that I've ultimately come to accept. Another thing that annoys me with the Mark II are these weird quirks where they've added features but not fully thought them out, like false color. So false color only works if you turn off the viewing LUT. So you can't have the viewing LUT and false color enabled. So this makes it really annoying to toggle on and off false color. It makes it pretty much impossible because you have to turn off the viewing look first. I'm sure this can be fixed in firmware, but it's just one of those little annoying Canon things. Another big one, which has bothered me for a long time, is that Canon IBIS wobble. I would have loved to see Canon fix this in this camera. I think that was a great opportunity for them to sort that out. But unfortunately, it's still there and it makes me think that it's probably going nowhere. So overall, I would say that I am glad that I upgraded to the R6 Mark II from the original R6. I honestly feel like this is just the most well thought out and well-rounded camera from Canon that I have used so far. Its hybrid functionality is excellent and it offers you both excellent photo and video quality in one package with no major compromises. But having said that, would I recommend upgrading from the R6 to the Mark II? To most people, probably not. If video is your main focus, then sure, the Mark II is more reliable and dependable, and in that case, it's probably worth the upgrade. But in terms of photo, I'm just not sure I could recommend that you upgrade if you already own the R6, or even the original EOS R, for example. Don't get me wrong though, if you are just jumping into the Canon RF ecosystem, then I think that the R6 Mark II is easily the best place to start. It's a great versatile camera, again for both photo and video, that is bound to serve you for many years to come with no need to upgrade in the foreseeable future. So let me know what you think of the Mark II. Did you upgrade from the original R6? And if so, how do you feel about that decision now, a few weeks on? Are you enjoying the camera and have you seen much of an upgrade? On the other hand, are you sticking with the R6 and do you have no interest in the Mark II? And if so, let me know why down in the comments. As always, thank you guys for watching and I will catch you guys in the next one.